We talked to a developer advocate from AWS about generative AI and how developers can use their AI tools for coding. Here is what we came up with. Generative AI currently is very, very important, not only for, for AWS, but for, I believe, almost for the whole industry. In my personal opinion, I believe that generative AI, it's a new wave that's changed the industry at all, the whole market. I think we can compare it to when cloud first time appeared almost 20 years ago. And for AWS, generative AI, it's very, very important. We do a lot of investments to create a good ecosystem and provide the right services for developers to create new products based on our services. As usual, AWS is a very uh, known company which provided good infrastructure and different services to create, based on these blocks, new product. In AWS, it's our currently goal and mission to create some ecosystem and create the good capabilities of different services which can be integrated between each other and you will be able to create a new product based on our service. What kinds of AI-related services does AWS provide for developers? I would say we have three different tiers or stack for generative AI. The lower tier is hardware. So many people who prefer to create their own models if you have enough money. So for example, you can spend uh, to run some GPU inside an AWS. Also in this layer, we have SageMaker. Based on the SageMaker, you can create again your model, make some optimizations, fine tune, and so on. The middle layer, it's a bedrock. Bedrock in short version to explanation, it's API level, where you can do almost everything. When I say everything, it means like in bedrock, first of all, we have almost all of the foundation models, for example, Anthropic with Cloud, Cohere, Stability AI, Meta uh, with Llama, and so on, so on. Many providers currently available inside in Bedrock. You can, for example, create a uh, good competition between different models. So what I mean, uh, you have some specific request or many requests based on your business needs, and you can create comparison between different models. For example, you don't want to spend so much time, money on Anthropic Cloud Opus, it's the biggest model from a tropic and you want to evaluate what the results will be from different models you can do it in bedrock do you need to create your own rock or retrieval augmented generation you can do it in bedrock it's called knowledge base so currently we support to get the data from web crawler. So it means like we will go to the internet and get this data from the internet. S3 bucket, for sure it's one of the easiest and uh, I think one of the best way because many companies already have data lakes where store their data inside an S3 bucket. Or for example, you have Confluence, Jira, we support all of this stuff. And uh, what's the most interesting part, not, not like most interesting, uh, flexibility and capabilities, what you can do in Bedrock also, it's available agents, generative AI agents. You can create your own logic to get the data from knowledge base, some, uh, for example, get real-time information, for example, what's the current weather in Paris, and based on this output, based on this result, do some stuff. Bedrock continuously growing. We have many, many different functionality, and I think we will speak a little bit later about that, what can help you to create your own application based on generative AI. And on the top layer, it's Amazon Q. What is Amazon Q? Amazon Q, it's the top layer of our generative AI stack inside in AWS. Again, in short version of explanation, what exactly is? It's end user uh, agent or service, what you can do day-to-day -day tasks. For example, you need to rewrite your Java 8 to Java 11 or 17. Based on the Amazon Q capabilities and functionality, you can do it just like in a few clicks to make this rewrite from old version of Java to new version of Java. You're working with a new code. Just provide some uh, comment what exactly you want to achieve, what kind of functionality you need to write. For example, you need to upload some documents to S3 or download the documents, auto authenticate through Google or some other services. Amazon Q will generate for you this amount of the code. Part of this functionality is provide for you security scan analysis on the existing code. So, for example, you can run this security scan and uh, Amazon Q will share and say, hey, in this line, you already write it down a 
and the plain text, for example, access key to Amazon. And the last one, but I think it's one of the most important, for example, I had this experience. So sometimes when we use such kind of tools which help us to write this code, generate this code, we don't know where we get this code. Yeah, you know, for example, maybe it's based on some open source product, maybe on some other product, uh, which license is not very mm, flexible. Amazon Q can help you to make this reference. This a part of this code was taken from this product, from this open source product. But if you're working on some very restricted uh, area, like for example, financial or health insurance, you can like understand okay i'm not going to use this part of code because it's make a reference from open source some specific pro projects and so on and just like remove it and so on so it's provided capability to you to check and make sure that all of your code is written it's uh, taken not from open source or taken from open source some specific product also amazon q it's not only to generate the code it's very important to understand because currently AWS try to integrate amazon q almost to everywhere we teach Amazon Q to based on our knowledge to, so it means like like fine-tune or create our custom knowledge base about AWS but if you have some questions about AWS services you can ask Amazon Q I know I'm also like a developer I know how sometimes difficult to find the right part of the documentation in AWS documentation in AWS is huge and sometimes you spend I know like hours to figure out where is this small key or reference how to use i know dms series during the migration from oracle to postgres amazon q can help you so um, you can ask amazon q to um, what i should do during the migration using dms from oracle to postgres and amazon q will provide the information based on our documentations based on our aws blocks and so on also we integrate amazon q to many other services for example you're working with cloudwatch and need to write some uh, query to provide what's exactly the metrics available during the last two weeks or uh, what's the most consumption uh, CPU AC2 instance was appeared during the last two weeks. So Amazon Q will help you just like write in native language in CloudWatch uh, request and Amazon Q will generate for you the specific uh, query for CloudWatch. The same, for example, in uh, QuickSight, so you can do it. Also, regarding the generation of the code in Amazon Q, for example, you have your own code base, and sometimes we have a style how we write the code. You can upload, it's, it will be available only in Amazon Q for business, so you need to have some separate license, but in general, if you're speaking about Amazon Q, you can create your custom knowledge based on the code you already written. You need to have at least 300 megabytes of your code base. Upload to Amazon Q, it will be secure, it will not share, and we will not use this data to teach our Amazon Q. It will be like fine-tuned this uh, instance of Amazon Q just for you and make sure that the next time when you write this code it will be aligned with your reference with your style with your approaches what you already uh, apply inside in your organization very good capability how you can make this like fine-tune of Amazon Q tool and write new code how can we start working with Amazon Q for developer Amazon Q developer exists in two different options the first one it's free and you don't need to create your own AWS account to provide a credit card and be worried that you pay some money for some services I know the story is that sometimes people start working with AWS and forgot uh, to turn off some virtual machines or share the access key and um, some miners use it to generate the money so uh, first option, it's using a uh, builder ID. It's a separate account, which is not related to specific AWS account. It's absolutely another account. You can create and use this for free. Another option, if you need to make this customization flexibility, what I mentioned previously, to customize your code base. So this is, will be required to uh, business subscriptions and so on. You will need to pay additional money. When I said additional money, first of all, please make sure you, you check the current price in, in our documentation. Uh, if you write a manual currently, it costs $20 per month. But in general, I would say for 99% day-to-day -day activities for developers, three options will be more than enough.
Can you tell us more about Amazon Q for Developers and IDE integration? I described how to start work with uh, Amazon Q, first of all, like a registry in this service. Builder ID is the best option, I think, just like to try and evaluate is it good for you or not, but how to start working with Amazon Q. So one of the best options it will be download the plugin for your favorite ID. I know, for example, you use JetBrains, available. Uh, VS Code, also available. Regarding the terminal, honestly, it's my favorite option. So you can install Code Whisper for your terminal, and uh, the next time when you need to write some command, for example, you forgot how to make rebase in Git, yeah? Or, for example, you just committed something and you need to revert this commit to the previous version. Sometimes we forgot how to do it in Terminal. And Code Whisper is also available for Terminal. You can write in a natural language what exactly you want to achieve, and uh, Code Whisper will generate this code for you. For integration with Terminal, you will need to install a separate application. It will be in your some bar, status bar. Uh, I just try and test it on Mac OS. It works also on Windows. It's not a big deal, but uh, so when you work with Terminal, it will help you to generate uh, what you exactly want to achieve. Like to write some bar script, very small bar script, or I don't know, like in Linux, we have many tools like Grab, AWK, uh, and other tools when we work with bars and split the strings. And sometimes it's not easy task to do it and Amazon Q in Terminal can help you. How can you convince your boss that Amazon Q is safe enough to use on a project? I totally understand this voice of customer. I, I know how sometimes we can be worried about what exactly we use, what kind of technology and so on. So I can provide a few examples. So one of the customer who didn't know like it's a secure or not secure when we show this capability of scanning and can show the reference, for example, this is part of the code, is a reference from open source product and the link to this product. So customer understood like, okay, my developer can use it and make sure that we don't use, for example, some open source code, we are not accept them. Uh, this is the first option. The second one, it's related to security scan. Very good integration, honestly. So sometimes we do some mistake, human mistake. And when you have this assistant who can make review of your code and provide it for you as a, hey, you made this OWASP uh, vulnerabilities and, you know, like SQL injection potential in your amount of the code. I believe all of you use some uh, static code analysis, like SonarCube, for example, almost the same functionality provided by Amazon Q. Regarding the, our clients, a lot of clients like Deloitte already use in their day-to-day -day, uh, work and generate the code. It helps you to speed up the performance of your developers. You know, you can write your code in uh, uh, Notepad, for example, yeah? But what the, your performance will be in this situation if you don't use some inter IntelliSense? Amazon Q is assistant which help you to speed up the process of the writing the code. It's very important to use this uh, next generation tool on the right way. When I said on the right way, so first of all, again, it's assistant, it not replace developers inside in your organization and responsibility accept this part of the code or not still will be on the developer who asks this request or generate this amount of the code. For sure, you have to have some pull request uh, review when you like send this data to the Git and review based on other developers. But a lot of day-to-day -day job, like rewrite, for example, Java from version 8 to Java 17 can take a lot of time. Amazon Q really can help you to do it very quickly and faster, almost without involving human in this process. Any final words for the audience? Generative AI, it's the next wave of evolution in IT. Please stay tuned, look what exactly is happening how to be a good prompt engineer. I mean, like how to be a good in prompt engineering. Evaluate different assistants. Amazon Q, it's one of the possible way. 
on the market exists another. Look at what you can create as application based on Amazon Bedrock with different foundation models. Try to play with Generative AI, so it will help you to increase your performance at least 10 times. Please stay tuned with us and look at the details of all of the services what I described today and below. Thank you very much and uh, follow me on LinkedIn uh, where I can be in your city or on the conference near your city. It was Victor Vedmich and bye.